My name is Mpadeni Tangeni. I'm the park manager of Mapungubye National Park and the Warrel Heritage Site. Um, Mapungubye National Park and the Warrel Heritage Site has got um, three heads. It's a national park, it's a cultural or a declared Warrel Heritage Site, and it's also a transfrontier conservation area. So the protected area on the South African side, because the transfrontier uh, conservation area consists of Zimbabwe, Botswana and South Africa and then the protected area in South African side is 19,691 uh, of hectares and then the other are just Mapungubia cultural landscapes which uh, builds up to 28,000 hectares that includes farms that are in between the park the park is defragmented, so meaning that there are small private farms that are doing agriculture in the area. One of the things that one needs to note, especially tourists, is that uh, Mapungubia cultural landscape is a multi-land use activity. Uh, when I said that, I mean that it's got a wildlife man um, uh, management or farming, it's got an agricultural, um, uh, activities which is crop farming and also livestock farming, goats and cattle in the same area and there are no fences in between. So that uh, um, leads us to the challenges that Mapungobe have. You can imagine you got uh, elephants, you got a crop farmer who's doing citrus farming and other uh, is doing pumpkins and other stuff you will experience huge problems with elephants going to those fields, looking for water, citrus, and also tomatoes. And uh, again, it, uh, Mapungubye uh, cultural landscapes involves a lot of a uh, community. The landscape itself has got a lot of stakeholders, community, land claimants in there. So when damages are done by elephants uh, without respect of boundaries, then uh, the park is being seen bad by the, by the public or by the stakeholders because we need to protect the, the animals in there. However, it is not that easy because the corridors were meant for a reason uh, to open up between South Africa, Botswana and Zimbabwe so that the animal can freely roam uh, from one country to another without any barriers or any problems. Um, however, that has been now uh, been uh, abused by humans because now humans always now cross the river Limpopo River into South Africa or into Botswana or from South Africa into Zimbabwe and uh, which is the results of um, illegal or illicit cigarette smuggling, uh, goats trafficking, there is a smuggling of goats from Zimbabwe into South Africa and there's some theft um, that's happening with cattle from South Africa crossing through the park into the Zimbabwean area. So there's a lot of um, uh, issues around. Uh, two more things uh, that you will really experience when you reach to Mapungubye. Um, as I indicated, multi-land use activities, there's a lot of cattle grazing, especially along the Limpopo River. Uh, those are our Zimbabwean cattle that, uh, because there's drought on the other side, they will always push them into the South African side. We push them back, they push them in, in, that, in the area. Then lastly is uh, a night poaching with dogs and donkeys. It's um, a lot of uh, night poaching as we are neighboring the communal lands of Zimbabwe, uh, the Maraman area. Uh, where there's a lot of people around and uh, it's easy for them to access the park as there are no fences on the other side. So yeah, that's um, what uh, I can indicate uh, uh, with Mapungube, but it's rich in um, cultural uh, and uh, heritage history. It's the main core, then uh, conservation that then follows up um, in, in Mapungube. Okay, um, Sam, I just want to, want to ask you one question. There's quite a few, um, I know there's diamond mines at uh, Venetia and stuff like that. Then, then there used to be a coal mining company operating close to Mapungube. Is that uh, mine still going? Or? Yes, um, the diamond mine in Venetia is still happening. They also have a reserve uh, called Venetia Nature Reserve that is neighboring us. 
and then they are proceeding on, on that side. They all, all also have a dam called Scroda Dam that is inside the park that pumps water 80 kilometers to the Venetia mine. And again, um, with the Limpopo coal mining, it's, um, it's active. It had um, section 24 in the past and then it was then completed, all uh, paper works done. And last year they started to operate uh, again. And uh, now because of the quality of the coal that they were getting and there are other uh, things, um, they're not operational now. They are still um, arranging or resolving other issues in the, in the mine. Uh, with Limpopo coal mining, what I can indicate is that uh, they are all contributing into Mapongobia a lot uh, with the, what we call biodiversity offset. So there's money that they're injecting into the park that assists in the maintenance of uh, heritage, artifacts or any other areas um, of heritage that requires maintenance. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay, so, so they, they're still operational uh, and, and they contribute. Are they close to you or are they on the borders of the National Park or, or half? Um, the Limpopo coal mining is almost 30 uh, kilometers away from here okay. and um, from the, our boundaries. Um, they are close to what we call Mapungwe Cultural Landscape Buffer Zone, yeah. which is declared uh, uh, with the UNESCO, uh, uh, on the UNESCO. So that's the boundary that they are very close, but they are not inside, they are on the outside boundaries of the UNESCO Mapungwe Cultural Landscape. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Sam. Thank you.